Hello, I'm Dr. Jacqueline Biddle Richard. Today I'm going to talk to you about integrating telehealth in nursing education. Telehealth is not new. It's been around since the early 20th century. Over the last 30 years, there has been an increase in its use, but it has grown exponentially in the last three to five months with COVID-19. Telehealth has its own language. The, the Healthcare Resources and Services Administration, or HRSA, defines telehealth in part as the use of electronic information and telecommunication technology to support long-distance clinical health care and health-related education. I call it an umbrella term to encompass telemedicine and telenursing and all other kinds of uh, technology services. In terms of tech, it includes audio, visual technology, technology that's synchronous, asynchronous, remote monitoring, and mobile technology like iPhones and tablets. Telehealth has lots of benefits. COVID-19, because of COVID-19, states and federal governments have relaxed regulations to make it easier for providers. The tech nowadays is also very accessible. Not everyone has all of this kind of technology, but most people do. It also happens to meet the Institute of Healthcare Improvement's triple aim initiative in that it decreases costs, improves access, and improves quality and outcomes. And there's also evidence that it increases patient and provider satisfaction. So why is it that it's so important to uh, have uh, telehealth in nursing education? Well, first of all, there's a likelihood that HRSA will fund it. So in 2007, HRSA funded a large initiative that benefit, benefited ultimately about 59,000 nursing students and over 9,000 nursing faculty. It was a five-year initiative that was uh, really considered a success, except for the telehealth part. So now HRSA has funded a new initiative with Old Dominion University and Texas Women's University that's specific for telehealth. Also, telehealth can be threaded into the curriculum because it covers all core services like acute, chronic, pediatrics, mental health, home care, and even maternity. Also, the literature supports telehealth in nursing education. There are some uh, case studies out there uh, talking about uh, integrating telehealth in uh, nursing education, and it has been a success. And there's also a workforce need, and nursing schools need to take advantage of this opportunity to help transform the nursing workforce. So how is this going to happen? How do you actually integrate telehealth into nursing education? Well, you do three things. One is that you're going to have to create and uh, deliver, teach foundational and specialized content. You're gonna have to be able to provide simulated experience, whether it's virtual or face-to-face. -face. And you're going to have to do research and be part of discovering uh, knowledge in this area. So before we go any further, let's talk about some potential barriers that you can overcome. Cost is usually a barrier, but I believe if you start small with inexpensive peripherals and tech, you can overcome that. Legal and ethical issues usually involves licensure. Again, we're starting internal, we're starting small. So you really don't have to worry about that. Besides, our faculty are RNs, and RNs in Texas are part of a compact. IT support, 
we can minimize IT support. Well, let's just start off by saying we need IT support, but we can minimize it by, again, starting small, using technology that the nursing department can actually uh, use on their own. And HIPAA is always uh, an issue and will be involved, but to get the program started, it's internal. We're not going to really have to worry about HIPAA at this point. And reimbursement is the same thing. We're internal. We're not providing a service to the community yet. And buying the buy-in uh, can be overcome by IDing the stakeholders early and providing education. So I'll leave you with three recommendations. Number one, you need to do a readiness assessment. The readiness assessment is important because you want to be able to identify your champion. You want to be able to know who is going to have authority over all of this and whether or not your mission and vision aligns with this initiative. You're also going to want to figure out if your values and culture will support this kind of initiative. You want to ID your stakeholders, right? Because we need their buy-in. You want to know what kind of resources do you have to be able to do this. And you want to be able to do a SWOT analysis to identify your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats that then you can use to build your strategic plan. Number two, I'll leave you with uh, thinking about what a prospective course, what, what would this look like? I envision a foundational course or courses to start, then intermediate courses that involve more hands-on technology, simulation, and having peripherals, and scale it up at, in the future to advance courses that would really involve providing a service for the community, doing research, and uh, really positioning yourselves as a uh, to provide education to your community and to um, the region. And number three, think about prospective simulation peripherals. Here, I just have a regular laptop. I have a mobile device and um, exam camera, which is usually used with a nurse on one side, providing uh, so that the provider on the other side could see, and also a stethoscope right here that can be um, connected and the uh, provider on the other end can hear what you're hearing. So with that said, thank you. If you have any questions, please email me at jackie.richard1 at icloud.com. And these are my references.